so that when your time is over, your legacy in this regard will impact women positively. Bravo for all you've done for our country and the empowerment of women. I tell you, corruption is a malaise in our society. We inherited it, and it's not just in government. It's not just in government. I'm serious. We have it in the banks. We have it in churches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we have it in organizations, yeah. in civil society, yeah. in the media, throughout. I try to say it comes from deprivation over many years of war. It starts there. It also comes from a system in which governments also allowed it with impunity. Yeah. It comes from weak judiciary where punishment was never part of it. It comes from poor compensation. There was a saying in previous governments, where you tie the good, that way you eat it. <laughs> Because they said to civil servant, you got that paper on your pay, you got to put your signature, that's your chance. <laughs> we are trying now to fight that. We start the Anti-Corruption Commission. We got the General Auditing Commission. I personally was very instrumental in recruiting John Maru. They've been putting out some, some reports. We're working with the courts. We have some people in court. It's a long process, but at the same time, the public gets very, very impatient. And we must also respect people's rights. Mm -hmm. If you accuse somebody, you must also have the evidence to take them to a court of law, and they must be judged guilty. Uh -huh. Before you, before you administer punishment. And so we're going through all of those processes to try to fight this police. It is serious, even, if any of you have, they send money to build houses. You got people building your house, you know what happened to your material. <laughs> so we must all fight it, but this government is committed to fighting this corruption, like you said, I would not be satisfied at the end of my administration if I have not done something to be able to say yes. If we've not totally eliminated it, we've got the laws to make sure that we've done something to set it on the right course of addressing it. We've got a code of conduct before the legislature right now. It's a tough code that will cover all three branches of government. And they all got problems. <laughs> but we, we do we do want you to know that this is this is a serious concern. You will you'll be hearing some people you'll be your your family, your associates, your friends, you will hear them go into court. <laughs> When I call me because I know that so you started sending the code and call you, hey man, you can't do that one room and call me. But we will continue to fight it. <laughs> Madam President, can you share a little about our current? As soon as I get back, we are going to put the first hammer on to the bridge because the contract has been signed. <laughs> well, I support the project. The project will start the end of April. On my return, we're going to start it. Madam President, could you please comment on how your administration plans to recruit professional Liberians? 
I guess they mean to go back. Mm. Well, Larry, I thought you would have told them that you've got a pad right there to take names to them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That's the way to start, right here and now. <laughs> Register. Dr. Yasky, you can sign up. <laughs> we do have these programs. I heard your president say that uh, you said your vice president just went back to take a position. And we hope that uh, many more of you will take that opportunity. We do, we do need the skills. We need the talent. We need the professionalism if we are going to be able to perform and to achieve our development goals in the manner in which we have planned. So the ambassador is here. If you don't register with Larry tonight, please give him a call. <laughs> Ask him to make sure that you get your name down. Uh, there are some that say, well, when I come and tell you, give me the job. Tell me which job I will go to. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. You want to come to a job? Plenty. You just come try for it. Come and test it out. <laughs> Come for a little while, see what's going on. <laughs> Madam President, after the TRC work, what will be done to individuals guilty of major atrocities as they should not continue to reside in the midst of the new Liberia? Well, it depends on the recommendation of the of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. If, for example, through the process of contrition and forgiveness, the commission decided, or an aggrieved person decided that they were not happy with the process, and they would like to seek redress under the laws of the country, they'll have every right to do so. And the government will have to give that support for them to be able to go through a court of law. That's part of justice. That's part of the healing process. So we're waiting to see what the TRC will come up with for recommendation. Uh, bear in mind that um, some people hold elected positions. And so, in a way, their own people are elected and have forgiven them. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there's an aggrieved person who wants to, to go further than that, we must allow justice to prevail. Madam President, how can your government adjust for a desired market result with dual currencies on the market, which gave rise to continued capital flight? It's a problem. And we've been studying the pros and cons of going one way or the other. Full dollarization is one way. Full local currency is the other way. Right now, working with our partners, the International Monetary Fund, we felt until the economy was open fully, until we can build the foreign exchange reserves that will determine whether we can go fully with the local currency, that at this stage, the dual currency with all of its shortcomings and its risks see the way to stay for at least another year until we've determined that we have an economy strong enough to move in the other direction. So it, it does have certain risk and it does make because we don't have